In the last lecture, we have uh, defined EIJ as the strain. Uh, but as you can see in the title of this lecture, uh, there's rotation in there. First, in this lecture, I want to show you that that's the case. And then second, uh, talk about how to create um, the true strain uh, not uh, with the rotation caused by the deformation removed. So there's a couple of ways to show that there's a rotation in the original EIJ. One way is to say, imagine if I'm looking at a two-dimensional system and um, This is just, of course, a completely general hypothetical case. But imagine that um, you have a deformation that takes us from the blue to the red. So, you know, we do some sort of um, uh, uh, apply some sort of uh, stress, we get strain, and the blue gets kind of shifted up here. And uh, remember that in all the cases we're talking about, because of the harmonic uh, bonding between ions, we are still talking about relatively small deformations compared to um, you know, you're not talking about large displacements in order to have even uh, <clears throat> regular linear elasticity theory hold, right? Because if we go too far, we get uh, inharmonic behavior, and that leads to thermal expansion, which we'll talk about in uh, the next, uh, uh, well, in, in a few lectures from now. But um, so these are all very small uh, deviations, and so if you think about that, if you look at this delta u versus the delta x1, Right, we have some strain, and uh, you could say, well, um, you know, the length, sorry, the, um, or if I call this phi, now it turns out that um, because of small deformation, you know, this essentially means that this is delta u2 over delta x1, which essentially means that, you know, phi, which is approximately e21, which is delta u2 over delta x1. So basically, you're looking at the case of something that says, look, you know, this, I've got some delta x1 originally, which I'm going to call just r here for some, some position. And what happens is uh, I'm approximating because it's so small, right? you know, phi, this is a pure rotation, and this is delta uh, u2, which we'll, you know, we'll just call, in, in the next thing, I'm just going to call it, uh, you know, some u. So, this is a pure rotation. So, it says that, look, for a small, for an elastic regime in which you have small uh, deformations, uh, you could easily have a pure rotation buried in this general a squishing of the material. Another way to see that is that if I drew a 
picture of what a deformed body uh, might look like. Let's imagine that I have some body that originally shaped like that. And then under deformation, let's say it looks like this. But you can almost see with your eye the way I've drawn it that there's certainly a rotation to the right besides being deformed. And so what we want is to essentially have this deformed thing without the rotation so that we can look only at the mechanical properties and not any uh, rotation, which doesn't have anything to do with the mechanical properties. It's just moving it in space where the actual forces on the atoms and things like that are, are represented by the blue and not by the, the rotation that happens to be uh, in red. So again, this was like the original deformed body. And then this blue one would be without the rotation, right? So let's look at this case then and just um, let's identify in tensor notation what, I mean, I've done this for one component here, but we want to define uh, this rotation in general for um, a, a matrix, uh, sorry, a tensor, and want to make sure that uh, we can remove uh, that aspect. So to remove it, let's find out how to identify it first. So let's... Um, Let's do that. So let's go back to that problem. Like I said, imagine we follow some point in space and I have this pure rotation segment, which remember again is right angles we assume for a small rotation. So again, imagine a circle, right? And I do a very tiny uh, rotation, then we can say that uh, I can identify a pure rotation by R dotted with U, right? That must equal to zero, right? That means that um, essentially I have pure rotation of R. Well, let's use our notation now. So R can really be written as a bunch of components ri and u can be written as a bunch of components of ui like we always do what that means is that you know so um and let's just call these just for you know go back to our same coordinate system i used r just to kind of bring in the idea of the um of the um uh, circle you know and how small rotations um, are, sh are perpendicular like this. But remember that in our previous thing, we called this X, you know, in our coordination, in our system over here, we have, let's say, X1, you know, X2 coming out of the board, and X3 going in or something like that. So let's just consider this to be a direction XI. So let's call these XI instead of R, just to go back into a nice coordinate system. And that's because, remember, we've defined U as strains times XI. So... Uh, if I now take r dot u, so putting that uh, together, uh, if we take r dot u, we end up with. So looking at what we uh, remember, and this is just because um, the UI was here and the RI is here. And so we're just dotting the two together. The two um, vectors are dotting, but I'm choosing to write this vector as a vector times the uh, strain that we had, EIJ, which has the rotation in it. And remember, the purpose of this is to identify 
because I'm doing this condition, the EIJ that comes out will be a pr pure rotation, right? So uh, when I multiply all this out, here's what I get. And the other cross terms, which I won't bother to uh, repeat here. Uh, just for speed, but uh, of course you have one for E13 uh, and E23, which you can see, and that would be, of course, the E23 with would be with X2, X3, and E13 would be with X1, X3. So basically, what this means, if you look at that, e each term then is going to have to equal zero, which also means that uh, epsilon 1, 1 is going to have to equal epsilon 2, 2 which is going to have to equal epsilon 3, 3, if my pixelization doesn't kill me. Actually, let me come back and start over again. So that means that epsilon 1, 1 is going to have to equal epsilon 2, 2, which is going to have to equal epsilon 3, 3, which is going to have to equal 0. And it also means, if you look at those cross terms, the, sorry, the terms with the E12 and the E21, uh, the only way it can work is if E12 equals a minus, sorry, minus 2, 1, and then E13 has to equal a minus E31, and then um, e23 must equal a minus e32. So if we draw our tensor now, essentially the pure rotation would be the following if I chose to uh, put the negative sign on that one. So pure rotation would look like that, where I have the same value in the diagonals, but of opposite sign. And so uh, this blue thing, uh, we're eventually going to term it the pure rotation matrix of uh, Wij. Now, you can see here immediately how you would actually use uh, this in order to calculate um, in order to calculate uh, what you would like to to have. So um, uh, if if I look here, I'd say, aha! If I have a uh, a the strain matrix that I really care about, it's buried in there. If I take uh, what I want to do is imagine if my original matrix is this, I want my EIJ to be zero, right? So let's do that out right now. So let's keep our blue so you can kind of see what I was talking about. So let's do the thought experiment that says, well, if I have the pure rotation, and I have uh, the, oh, sorry, is that right? Yes, that's correct. So this is, I'm just trying to draw the same thing I had before. And remember, that's pure rotation, right? We proved that. That's how we derived it. So what we want to do is say, aha, if I add something to this, right? What I would like to do is to add something in here, which then would result in the true strain related to the materials, properties, deformation, and not just uh, the rotation. Well, I think you could see, you'd say, aha, you know, if this were pure rotation, what I want to do is flip these right and and flip these and add it 
right? So if I transpose across here, and I would take that and make that the red, and it was just a pure rotation, then um, I would be adding in this middle spot a minus E12, and it would exactly cancel this, right? And then if I transpose this across here, and this for E, um, a negative E13, and I added that, that would cancel that, right? So, so if I if I just take you know and flip this guy, and I add it, I would get zero, and that's what I want because of course if if it's pure rotation, I want all of the epsilons to be zero. So the way to think about that is that I would want to have this be E21. Remember the key of the subscripts again? A little subtle change, but really important. So in, in other words, in this case, remember that E21 is the minus E12. And so it would cancel this, right, if I were to add to it. And the same thing here. This would be the opposite, E31 right and <clears throat> then of course i'd want this to be the opposite e12 so remember that's normally up here but i flipped it right because i want to flip this whole thing across here and then add it so that if it is pure rotation it would cancel right and of course the diagonals are still zero but i would make of course this one an e32 and this would be an e23 this would be an E31, right? Correct. So if you think about what this really is, then I'm saying, aha, what I want to do is if this were the original, imagine <clears throat> that this was the original uh, EIJ, what I want to do is add an EJI so that if it is a pure rotation it goes away right now the only problem is if it's not a pure rotation look what happens I have uh, this plus this and imagine it's pure epsilon it's not there's no rotation well I got a problem because now I have two E12 basically so to correct for that what we have to do is take this and divide by 2. So what epsilon ij is going to be is eij plus eji divided by 2. So let's write that down. So the way to take out rotation is eij is going to equal 1 half eij plus E J I so um, the easiest way to see that sometimes people just write this down but I think this idea of saying well let's imagine it's pure rotation in blue and then what do I have to add to it so that epsilon which is the strain that I want without rotation uh, would be zero and that's what we did here and we found out it's eji you can tell by inspection i just want to flip it and add it to cancel it out and we need the factor of two because if it's not if it's if imagine this were not rotation at all but this was pure shear or something then i would need to divide by two because i just doubled everything well now we can define uh, the other pieces because you know the um, convention uh, for how you look at the rotation matrix and all that is actually a little bit different. We say that the E I J, right, the original thing that we had, right, is including both a rotation. And the thing we actually care about from a materials perspective uh, 
Epsilon IJ, which I've run out of pixels here, evidently. So let me, sorry about that. Let me erase and start over here, just to remind you. So again, our original strain tensor, we have a rotation element, which we proved is in there. And we have the thing we care about from materials perspective, which is epsilon ij. We've already said through that little exercise, the way that I can make sure that I have ij, epsilon ij, is that we're going to take this and we're going to add the transposed uh, ej-i. And that will give us the pure non-rotation, right? Well, if we want to find rotation, then all we have to say is, well, if we now plug this into there, uh, what you can show is that Wij, of course, is equal to minus E. So that's the opposite exercise of what I did before. You can imagine that if I take the EIJ and I want to find only the rotation part, instead of you know adding the transpose, I would subtract the trans transpose. I still have to divide by 2 because I'd have twice the rotation matrix. Divide by 2 and comes out back out. But you can also see this by simply taking the EIJ, which we derived, and plugging it in here, right? And we've got the EIJs here and the EIJ here. And when you just uh, do simple algebra, you'll see that WIJ omega IJ equals 1 half that. And of course, this makes sense just from what I was saying before, because the opposite case for what we did when uh, we re derived that. So that's how you get to the pure epsilon on J and make sure that you don't have the rotation in place.